what I, we can do on the platform and we do incredibly well is we look at political trends and we try and see what's really going on. We lift the curtain and peek behind it. One of the people who helps us do that from the Democracy Project of Victoria University is Bryce Edwards and Bryce joins us now. Bryce, good morning to you. You're not too wet. Everything good in your life? Oh, yeah, it's a bit stormy in Wellington still, but no, nah, it's... It's, it's, it's nothing like up in the north, so yeah, yeah. We're, we're thankful for that. Yep. Yeah, uh, it looks crazy uh, uh, up there, there Bryce. Um, and I just, in a broad sense, want to ask you, a disaster of this scale has a political impact, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, and people don't like to talk about that too early because they feel we have to be united, you know, yeah. and we've got to put politics aside, but natural disasters are still political uh, you know, events. And, you know, this is going to be the making of Chris Hipkins, you know, I mean, if he hasn't already made it. Um, you know, this is just going to give him so much air time. He'll be wearing that orange vest. Like the Bob orange Parker vest, the do. guy in charge um, leading us through yep, a time of and, crisis. And really, maybe Jacinda Ardern will be, you know, banging her table today, um, wishing that she was still around to be, you know, um, if, she, if only she'd known that there was going to be this uh, national Another chance for her great communication her skills to come yes. to the fore. I, I, I'm joking, of course, but, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, all I'm trying to say is this will be good for the incumbents. Um, and, you know, it's a hard thing that he's going to have to go through, Kim, yeah. but it's going to be good for him politically. And Lux, and of course, it's going to be a disaster for him. It's going to sideline him, him for weeks, probably. Yeah. And it, um, it it really does change things. But, of course, you know, there's going to be some big political debates now, especially about climate change and... Um, yeah, well, I see Lux and Scott just gone completely woke, apparently, on the AM show this morning. He just said this is all about climate change. Well, I, I think that's really where the discussion has shifted about, you know, the climate change element of this. And, you know, he's pushing the adaptation side, you know, not so much mitigation. It's all about how do we now, um, you know, shift people away from areas that can't... Yeah, which isn't a climate change. It's a resilience mitigation argument, yeah. isn't it, Bryce? Which uh, I think that's hard to disagree with. Oh, absolutely, and he's on pretty solid ground. I think everyone, just about everyone, will agree with him on that, yeah. and that's where the debate's going to be on on climate change. I think now, and about housing intensification, yeah. and oh, but there's just going to be a big debate on how the hell do we pay for all of this? Not just yeah. that. It's called insurance, stuff, but, for us. but I don't know how much insurance covers things like roads, yeah. <laughs> infrastructure, power. Yeah. Um, no, I think national government, as in central government, is going to be, yeah, up for some big money here. It's going to yeah. impact. It suggests uh, tens of billions, plan. tens of billions. Yes. And so I think it's going to probably accentuate that bonfire of policies that Hipkins had already started. You know, it's really going to focus the mind on, you know, getting rid of the, the nice-to-haves and focusing what, you know, yeah. really needs to be paid for at the moment. Yeah. Bryce, well, it comes in a context where Tina Nixon, one of our announcers and um, friends of the platform, has postulated, and it's a rumour I had hear, heard as well, that Labor would like, given the success of Chris Hipkins, given the bump they've got from him, would like to go to the polls early. Look, I, I think I heard people talking about this on the platform as soon as Ardern resigned. Mm. And I wrote a column um, arguing the merits of a, of a snap election. So it's been apparent for a while that it might be the way ahead for Labour, you know, because they're always going to get a bit of a honeymoon from Hipkins uh, becoming the, the new Prime Minister. And things could get much worse yet with the economy and all sorts of you know, crises this year. And... You know, an October election might still be a recessionary election, you know, based on, yep. you know, who can manage the economy better. And um, it might be best that Hipkins goes now when he's yep. got this bump. And, and, um, look, and I and think, I, 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 personally, I, I said yesterday, probable to likely is my assessment of this. And I base that, to be honest, just on gut feeling. The problem is, though, Bryce, you've got to have a reason to go to the polls early. Yeah, so, and or you have to have you? a convincing one. 
Well, I mean, I think you and I remember back in 2002, uh, Helen Clark called an early election when the alliance were imploding. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was it was bullshit, really. Uh, no, it wasn't actually. Uh, well, yeah. it wasn't actually. No, you're right. Um, you're completely right, the, Bryce. The I love that you said yeah. it. That's all. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, and she thought about her early election because Labour were polling so well and she yeah. thought she could get that majority government. Um, but it didn't work out because people didn't believe her about the reasons for mm. going early. Um, and so she got a bit of a backlash. So, yes, you do have to be convincing. I mean, there's no there's no constitutional reason that Arjun couldn't... Sorry, I'm falling Hipkins. into bad habits. But Hipkins couldn't call uh, an early election. Um, you know, he, he's got the authority to do it whenever he wants. Yeah. But well, well, here's... I'm, I'm going to paint you a scenario. Uh, yeah. Jacinda Ardern, in the day that she arrives, uh, resigns, which is in April, to avoid the by-election... And Chris Hipkins says, look, so Jacinda Ardern's gone. We've had this massive natural disaster. We've got to start getting the country back on its feet now. We don't need six months into that process the distraction of a general election. I say, let's set our course now. We'll go to the polls now and whoever wins can rebuild the country from all the problems we've had. Yeah. I, I think that might be compelling. Um, I don't know if it's mixed up with Ardun's, you know, by-election. I just think it's a good time parliament. to do it, and it's a it's a yeah. significant transition for the Labor Party. And I've also got to admit, Bryce, it doesn't look like Nationals really ready. Yeah, uh, um, I mean they've had you know a few years to prepare, but they keep on changing leaders. Uh, they have problems coming up with policy. Um, they're more united than they have been in the past, but whether they would be ready to fight uh, an early election... I mean, they've got the money. We, we know that they have been mm. getting millions of dollars in donations, so they've got the resources, but, yeah, I don't think they're ready, no. I think they've been left on the back foot with this leadership change. They didn't see this coming, which is mm. fair enough, but Hep, uh, sorry, uh, Luxon doesn't seem very uh, light on his feet. Um, no, he's you know, a pole driven a plan, automaton. Yeah, and he sticks to it. Yeah, yeah and he's a bit flat footed, as people keep saying. Yeah. And so he really needs to adjust to the new realities of facing Hipkins. Um, he can't just keep on banging on about the cost of living, which he yeah. was right to do. And um, true and see. Because now Hipkins. Yeah. But Hipkins has taken up that yeah, now yeah. very well. And so, you know, he needs to actually propose his alternatives, finally. He keeps on saying they can wait until the election campaign. But, you know, I, I, I think the suspicion is that the National haven't really got any great alternatives to Labour at the moment. OK, so Bryce, give me likelihood of an early election, oh, oh, a snap election. Oh, look, I, I'm a bit more conservative than you, I think, uh, Sean. Um, I reckon 20%. But um, uh, okay. I, I, I certainly admit there's a, there's a chance. I mean, those polls are going in the right direction for Labor. Yeah. Um, and now with this natural disaster, um, yeah, there's good reasons for taking advantage. And of you won't that. want to and strike while the ginger is hot. Ah, yes, indeed. No. And he can use that that argument that. People didn't vote for him. They voted for Ardern. You know, he wants to get a mandate. Let's get this election out of the way. And yes, I think people will... And let's rebuild rebuild a troubled, a troubled rebuild. country. Look, what about the possibility? And I see all the lefty Labour agent provocateurs and Green agent provocateurs on Twitter and saying, oh, Nicola Willis is going to roll Lux. And that's just bloody rhetoric and mischief, isn't it? Oh, I'm pushing along some of this mischief myself. Um, no, I, but I have heard from people in National that it is a discussion going on at the moment. Um, oh, I don't God, know how many voices is, uh, is it really? Yeah, but they're, they're <laughs> of course they're going to have a discussion. I mean, that's nothing new because... Have you heard that from anyone the actually in the National Party, Bryce? Oh, look, I don't want to go too much into details on those sources. It's not details, that, that's it's very broad. Have you actually heard it from someone okay. who's actually in the National Party? Uh, yes. Okay, all but right. Not an MP. Not an MP. Not an MP. Oh, not an MP. Uh, okay. But, no. Um, now, I mean, but that's nothing scandalous. Of course, they're going to always be thinking about um, who the next leader should be. Yeah. And Luxon, you know, has done an extremely good job um, in his first year. 2022, you know, he was pretty yeah. amazing. And he yeah. um, unified the party. He was pretty solid. 
and he got those poll ratings back up. But then things have stalled. No, uh, and, see, you know, my argument the, is that he didn't. I, I would say the growing unpopularity of Jacinda Ardern, um, which was driven by completely, in fact, has had nothing to do with Luxon. That's what caused the fall and uh, decline in Labor. La Labor walked away from the electorate. National well, but, didn't push a wedge between them. But, that's true, I, but I think National pre did a pretty good job of being in opposition and pointing out the shortcomings and the... I think they did a good the job of not changing leader for a while. <laughs> well, that's the thing, and, and and this is always the counterpoint. Do you change leader and look disunited, look incompetent? You know, it doesn't really project unity and competence, does it, if you're changing a leader in election year, as we saw with the musical chairs back in 2020. Okay. So you give me 20% on a yeah. snap election. What are you going to give me percentage-wise on a change of National Party leader? Oh, geez, these questions really put me on the spot, uh, Sean. But You're the I'd expert, Bryce. Like, you are the no, expert. No, That's you what... can't. I, I'm not a soothsayer. I'm not a... Um, you called look, the departure I, of a den. So, so now true. I just well, bow at your feet. <laughs> look, I, I'd say, yeah, 35% chance. 35. So you rate the chance yeah. of Luxon being replaced as leader of the National Party is higher than the chances of a snap election? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. Wow. Um, okay. Look, Nicola Willis is, is quite a quite a strong performer. She, I think she would be a very good leader of the opposition. Um, and I think her against Hipkins would give National a better chance. Okay. Bryce, good call. Thank you for your honesty. And as always, thank you for coming on. You always give us massive, massive food for thought. Thank you very much indeed, mate. Talk soon. Okay, cheers. Guys. Cheers. That is Bryce Edwards, political lecturer at Victoria University. Okay. He says 35%, right, and look, look, don't hold him to it precisely. I stuck him on the spot. He says there's more chance, Lux, and he, both of them, he says things are unlikely to happen. Only 20% chance of a snap election, 35% of Lux and getting, um, uh, getting replaced as leader. But my point is, my point is, uh, I just think Hipkins says we've had this disaster. I want to get the country fixed. I haven't really got a mandate to be the Prime Minister, and I want one. I think that's a justification for an early election. Sean, Luxon is totally on the right track. Why would anybody want to take on Labour train wreck New Zealand, run for the Blue Mountains and leave New Zealand red to its own mess? Sorry, but there you go, a Bert. Bert, it is a persistent, but one of the, and I'm just going to say silliest, if not stupidest, uh, political punts as you say, oh, they wouldn't want to win this election. I can tell you, Bert, there has never been a politician or a political party who wanted to lose an election and wouldn't rather be in government than in opposition. End of story. So stop being so silly.